Hello everyone, today I'd like to show you my custom built home server that I built from various parts that were lying around my home, useless. And so I put it together and made a server. And my goal in doing this video is to show you my my server first of all and then tell you and show you various things that you could do with the server um, for example softwares that you can install um, especially softwares such as a WAMP server so you could use your home server as a, a file hosting when you're not home um, using your server as a a DVR with soft with hardware's like um, HD Home Run Prime. So let's start off with the hardware aspect on my server and uh, I'm telling you this is nothing that I bought just for this purpose all these items that I have in here are from previous boats and things that I that was left over over years since 2006 I believe um, so starting off the motherboard is the F XFX motherboard I, I believe it's uh, XFX i65 650i um, and I think after this XFX stopped making motherboards um, so but I bought it back in 2006 I believe and I have a quad core processor Intel uh, quad core processor the 6600 Q6600 in there and that this was my first um, rig uh, matter of fact the motherboard and the quad core processor and then I have the CPU cooler from a uh, cooler master hyper hyper n520 uh, on my personal rig I use uh, water cooling now so no more fans so that's why it's it's not being used but it's, I'm been using it in, within this um, rig right now next we have the power supply the X4 from Ultra I be believe this is a 500 gate 500 watt power supply um, where I came about this one was the original one I believe the 550 watt one died on me and Ultra had a lifetime warranty and so they replaced it uh, with the X4 which was the latest one and so that's how I came about this one and um, good power supply uh, good brand as far as they have the lifetime warranty not many manufacturers offer that and no hassle once you if you register the product then we have this raid card here from um, high point the 2300 raid card it has four ports SATA ports this was from a, a Dell rig that I pulled out um, that I a, a Dell computer that I got off of eBay and um, and I pulled that card out from there and we have this um, GPU here which is a PNY 7300 GPU with 500 and 556 uh, megabytes of RAM and one thing about this particular motherboard it, is that it doesn't have a VGA port so you need external um, card to get the VGA or DVI or whatever interface you need and so this is a card that was lying around which I popped in so I could get video off 
Um, then I have various. Um, then if I have four gigs of RAM there, and I have here. Um, hard drives. The boot up drive is this five one uh one hundred and fifty gigabyte Raptor drive from Western Digital. It runs at a speed of one thousand RPM. Uh, it's supposed to. Then I have three eighty gig um hard drives. These are Seagate, I believe. These are used one that I also got from eBay. Um, then I have two 180 gig and one 320 gig hard drives, uh, two and a half inch hard drive right up here. I don't know if it's viewable. I have a fan here, uh, 140 millimeter fan. Then I have this bay here from StarTech removable mobile rack. This bay here is um, two bay with three. It takes two bay of your standard uh, dry bays, uh, the five and, five and a quarter bays, but it'll give you three um, hot swap bays. So I have the first two filled. The first one has a Western Digital, a green drive with 1.5 terabyte. The second one has a 325, 220 gig um, Western Digital hard drive. And the final one is empty. Also got this from eBay with the Dell computer. And this was where the original um, 80 gig hard drives were. Um, the three I showed you on the other side. Reason I put took those out and put it inside the computer is because I want these easily accessible these these two hard drives and if I want I could turn it on and off here and not not um not uh not use it at all. Um the case I have here is a Roosevelt uh case that I got of of Newegg back uh, a few years ago it was on one of those um um what was it? Uh, Shell Shocker, I believe, and I think it was like twenty bucks or twenty-five bucks, and free shipping. And I thought then it was a good deal. Um, so uh, it's a very crowded case, uh, but it does its purpose. Um, I did my best in cable management, but it is a small case, and as as such, it's you know it's it's hard. And there is no real back end to put the cable through. I did much as I can uh, without the door not closing. So, um, so I have a fan here comes through here, and enough more ventilation here, and this this air this airflow here from here down is supposed to lead to, is supposed to blow it out. I could put another fan here, but we'll see what happens. And um, I have four 80 gig hard drives, these three and one of the two, uh, the laptop hard drives, four hard drive, four 80 gig hard drives in RAID 0, and um, one hard drive stand standalone, and um, these are if uh, I use only if I want to, if I want to turn on to save conserve power. Um, so this is the hardware aspect. And I'm going to show you, let me turn this on and show you how everything runs as far as when it's, as you can see it's a very noisy, um, noisy machine. You don't want this in your room. Um, you want it, you want it somewhere in the basement away. And the operating system that I'm running this on is window windows vista ultimate the 64 bit i'm also planning to upgrade the ram from um, 4 gigs to 8 gigs and 
so that's the plan I think the one that's making the noise here is the is the GPU fan uh, it's an old GPU so and I I think it's somebody's touching it or and I try to fixing it but uh, I leave it alone because after some time it goes away so I leave it as it is um, so that's the hardware so So um, it is just as important to have software when have when installing um, a server as hardware. Reason is that you need the software to bring the hardware into its fullness. Uh, without a good software configuration and good without good cho software choice, everything even though how good of a hardware you have it will never be um, it will never function properly or it will never satisfy your need um, I have Windows Vista Ultimate with this build and 64-bit um, Windows Vista Ultimate reason I have it is because it has Win uh, Windows Media Center number one and it has uh, window um, Microsoft um, promote desktop so Windows Media Center is mainly because I'll show you is mainly because I wanted to use this computer as um, a DVR uh, I wanted to record at um, record um, record DVRs and I record videos um, and I could show you the recording you know I have these these were recorded today and my schedules for for the next for the coming week and I'll add more um, that's one reason and and for and I'm gonna put this computer in the basement and let's say if I want to check up on something add something I want to be able to go in go and, and log into this computer without coming all the way down to the basement I, I can do that without Without any adding any softwares, uh, just by using the software um, from Windows, which is the remote desktop connection, uh, and the Windows uh, Vista Business and Windows Vista Ultimate has the server aspect of remote desktop connection. Uh, the Home Premium doesn't have it, or nor the Home. So um, that's why. I chose Windows Vista Ultimate and Vista because I had the license key for it and I had it I had it I I just had it you can use whatever you like Windows 7 um, you know home premium or, or ultimate or you know or you can use Windows uh, 8 if you like um, so it all depends on your need and what you want to achieve and 64 bit because I want to use the entire processor capability, the entire not limit the RAM with 4 gigs, but I want to go beyond maybe use 8 gigs, so I won't be limiting in it any factor. And also, that said, uh, let me show you my basic hardware configuration. Uh, as you as I said, just with the ultimate, I have an Intel Core 2 quad, the 60 Q6600 here. I have 4 gigs of RAM as of now, and my mistake I said 650, but this is the 680 ILT socket 7775. And well, I have a Razer monitor which I'll be taking out, and the 256 megabyte GeForce 7300 GT from PNY. Uh, the hard drive, no optical drive, no audio attached as of now. So that's what I have. And network the stand. Um, 
also I want to show you guys is um, how to set the power setting let's go to control panel um, I have it on power saver and I want to change plan I put the um, turn off display in one minute and put the computer to sleep never I left that on uh, I left it like that saved and um, that's what I did so it'll never go to sleep never go to hibernation any of that um, it'll stay just like that I did not install any um, um, antivirus software and if you also also if you want to um, use this computer for Windows remote desktop you have to enable it under uh, you have to enable it in in remote settings and you'll be able to do that so I'm gonna, now I'm going to show you that uh, and uh, you know you could google that um, and also turn off turn off go to control panel go to control panel and go to security and go to uh, go to Windows update and change settings and you you want to put it to never check for updates it says not recommended uh, you want to first install all the updates, all the service packs, and all the various um, updates that the computer has. Uh, once you have done that, install the drivers and make sure the computer is stable. Once you do that, take off the turn off the updates because you don't want the computer to update and turn off and restart on its own. You want once it's ready to go, you want it that way forever and when you're ready you want to go in and manually update various things if, if if you feel that it's needed otherwise just leave it alone if you start if you leave the update on what happens is that the computer will manually update and errors will stop popping up um, you know it will shut down and turn back on and your software that you want to run will, will not be running properly uh, so you, you don't want to you want to turn those things off okay and that's what I did and next I'm going to show you how to install uh, WAMP server so um, and how to you how to do port forwarding and all and um, port forwarding not just on the router end but also within the WAMP server itself how to change the ports and uh, so if you like to run a, a home server uh, for file access purposes you can do that um, so stay tuned